Da, ba, ba. Take three. The microbiome. What did I start with? The, the microbiome is how you started it. Yeah. Hi, I'm Allie. And I'm Becky. We are registered dietitians that take a functional approach to optimal whole body health, and we believe in the power of food as medicine. In today's video, we will be covering what the microbiome is, five ways that probiotics support whole body health, as well as some of our favorite probiotic and prebiotic foods. With over a decade of clinical experience and thousands of patients that I've worked with, I see probiotics and gut health as being one of the most influential roles in whole body health, including mental health, which we'll impact today. And it all starts with the microbiome. The microbiome exists in the mucosal membranes of our body. So this is our nose, our throat, our gut, even we have a vaginal microbiome and an ocular microbiome in our eyes. And 100 trillion cells make up these colonies, which are a combination of bacteria and yeast. They outnumber the cells in our body 10 to 1 and make up 3 to 5 pounds that live in our body that we just serve as the host. When the body is in optimal balance, we are in a symbiotic state where the microbiome is working for the human body. When the bacteria in the body is imbalanced, maybe we have a gut pathogen or yeast overgrowth like candidiasis or candida, then we are in a dysbiotic state and that can create a whole level of imbalance in the body. So let's go ahead and start with the ways that probiotics can support our body. I think the most widely recognized is probably digestion. So looking at impact on bloating and distension, we actually see in research that lacto and bifidobacteria can help to reduce GI bloat, distension, and discomfort. And then our probiotics also help to break down the foods that we're eating. So they're helping to assimilate and absorb those nutrients, make them into tinier little pieces for us to digest and absorb. And then third off, we're looking at influence on bowel regularity and motility. So an influence on constipation and regulating our bowels as well. The second area of where probiotics can have a powerful influence on the body is with mood. Now, this may be a little bit of a new concept to some of you. We actually have an enteric nervous system, which is the second brain of the body that resides in our intestines. And the enteric nervous system communicates bilaterally with our central nervous system, and it influences our autonomic nervous system, which is what regulates our fight or flight or rest and digest mode. Based on the strains of bacteria that are in our gut, if we're in a symbiotic state, the gut is going to manufacture more feel-good neurotransmitters. 80% of the serotonin is made in the gut, and when the gut is balanced, it's going to pr be producing more of that. The gut also is going to make GABA, which is a neuroinhibitory anti-anxiety compound that helps us to find our mellow when the gut is in a balanced state. Now, if the gut bacteria is in a dysbiotic state, we can actually see a higher amount of epinephrine or adrenaline made for the body. And this can create a chronic fight or flight, panic attack, or anxiety response in the body just based on the gut bacteria being off, trying to signal to the brain that something isn't right. To add insult to injury, when we're under high stress, mental or physical stress response, we can actually see sterility where the good bacteria dies off, so then you're lacking that landing gear of serotonin and GABA to mellow you out from your stress response. Clinical research, in fact, a double-blind placebo study, which is the gold standard when we're talking about research, has shown that probiotic pills can be very effective antidepressant tools. In fact, this study found significant outcomes in reduced depression, as well as reduced CRP, which is a marker of inflammation, reduced insulin resistance, and we saw enhanced immune function in the population that took the probiotic pills, and we did not see those outcomes from the placebo. And I've heard you say probiotics are nature's Prozac, so it sounds like that's absolutely true. Beyond. <laughs> and then there's also favorable influence of having a balanced microbiome on our hormones. So there's actually this term called the estroblome, which basically recognizes that our sexual hormones have interchange with the probiotic populations in our body. And we see clinically in women who have 
conditions such as fibroids or endometriosis, as well as infertility, that some of the compounds in our Beat the Bloat cleanse that we might put them on actually can have favorable influence on their fertility and on the tissue that lines their uterus. Most definitely, and I think that's another one that not a lot of people are familiar mm -hmm. with. Now one you might be more familiar with with probiotics is the fourth reason, which is immune health. So we actually have tissue in the gut called the GALT, the gut-associated lymphatic tissue. And this is where the majority of the immune system resides. Our white blood cells are highly influenced by the probacteria in our gut, and the white blood cells are the initial army of defense for your immune system. Probiotic colonization in your body can impact both the innate and acquired, so the actual first barrier onset for your immune system and the learned adaptive immune system, because we've seen probiotics to play a role in the toll-like receptors in your gut that play a combination of your T helper cells and other adaptive processes in our body. Beyond probiotics serving as a way to defend your body and support your immune system, we also know there are mechanisms of enhancing natural killer cells, which can reduce tumor activity in the body, and this is where we see the microbiome playing a huge role in cancer research. And then when we're talking about like our children and the whole household when we're getting into cold and flu season and any form of virus, we know that the probacteria can have a huge impact. In fact, this research study used the exact two strains in our kids' biotic, the NCNF lactobacillus and the bifidobacterium. And they found with six months of use for children ages three to five that they had reduced runny nose, reduced cough, reduced fever, reduced sick days overall. All the more reason not to miss supplementing with your probiotic every single day. Yes, for sure. Because we all know those yes. aren't just seasonal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And finally, we do see favorable impact on metabolism when our gut microbiome is balanced. So in obese populations, oftentimes we see increased dysbiosis or pathogenic overgrowth in those individuals. And some studies have shown that when we supplement with probiotics, that those individuals will experience lessened insulin resistance, they will experience less cravings due to the mechanism of leptin in the body and favorable blood sugar outcomes resulting in weight loss. So I think those five reasons are enough for us to all ensure that we get a cultured food a day. I would argue a cultured food a day keeps the doctor away. And if you're dealing with significant symptoms or disease states within those five priorities, I would highly recommend incorporating a probiotic supplement on top for an added insurance policy. But let's start with foods first, Becky. Sure, I think some of our favorites, and these are things that we incorporate probably on a daily basis in our own household, but yogurt is a great one. So starting with either a full fat dairy yogurt that is sourced from organic grass-fed dairy, or coconut yogurt if you don't tolerate dairy can work really, really well as a quick, easy breakfast or a snack. And I think it's a really kid-friendly one as well. Most definitely. Now I will say if your child is dealing with mucus or phlegm, it would be best to do dairy-free options because we know dairy can contribute to that. But if you're not dealing with flu or cold symptoms, the dairy option may be superior if your child tolerates the dairy because they are going to get more protein in a strained Greek yogurt option. Cultured vegetables are another great choice. So whether it's a classic cultured pickle, kimchi, or sauerkraut as we have pictured here, the lactofermentation of the vegetation creates a lot of strains of good gut-loving bacteria. Yes, and don't throw out the juice in your probiotic pickles or your sauerkraut. You can actually use that as a shooter, and we often use that as a way to combat electrolyte imbalance or keto flu. Yes. Kombucha is another fantastic add-in as a probiotic-rich food. It is comprised of a SCOBY, which is an acronym, a symbiotic colony of yeast and bacteria. It has Saccharomyces boulardii in there and various forms that actually can be antifungal and support a dysbiotic gut if you're post-cleanse and you wanna maintain that symbiotic state. It's a delightful effervescent beverage that can be a great evening nightcap. Yep, instead of a glass of wine, that's what I've been doing just about every night right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll have a robust microbiome yes. for babe. Yes. <laughs> and the last one I'd call out is miso. Uh, miso is a soy-based paste. 
Now, I do remove soy from the anti-anxiety diet and a lot of protocols, but when soy is fermented and in this whole food form, we actually see that it can support like breast cancer research. We've seen that the miso consumption can reduce your risk of breast cancer, so it actually can help with the estrogen metabolism in your body and give you those feel-good cultures. And great to use in something like a salad dressing, or maybe stir it into some bone broth for some added gut support. Absolutely, just make sure you cut the heat and same mm -hmm. point with your kraut. If you're doing that yes. with like a grass-fed hot dog or something like that, make sure that you don't cook all those feel-good cultures away. Exactly. And then prebiotics are another area that we haven't quite touched on yet. So let's talk about the influence of sure. prebiotics. What are they and what do they do for us? So these provide fermentable fibers as a food source for your probacteria to eat to maintain viability. So it's basically like fertilizing your feel-good gut bugs so that they can maintain livelihood in life. We're looking at the fructooligosaccharides that would be in something like a banana or your FOS fibers. We're looking at your alliums, which is the onion family, including onion, leeks, shallot, garlic. And then there's also inulin and other prebiotic fibers in artichoke and foods like asparagus. So we challenge you all to get in at least one probiotic rich source daily and then you can also supplement with probiotics on top of that. Yes, if you're not sure to start with supplementation, you can go on over to AllieMillerRD.com. Under the protocols tab, there will be a what probiotic works for me button. And in that will be a comprehensive table that will show you symptoms, strains, and which formulas are best for every member in your household. Also stay tuned if you don't tolerate probiotics, if you've ever taken a probiotic supplement or eaten a probiotic food and feel like a bomb went off in your belly, <laughs> stay tuned. We'll be talking more about what that means and how you can incorporate a probiotic challenge to learn more about your microbiome. To make sure you don't miss a video, be sure to subscribe, click down here, and you'll make sure that you stay on top of all of our Food as Medicine support. Pop on below to subscribe to our YouTube channel to make sure that you're on top of all of our food as medicine tips and tricks. <laughs> I hate that. I hate that. Let's close again. And I kind of stumbled. Yeah, Where's the table?